Obviously, we've heard the news about the, the lifting of, of public health interventions, the rescinding of public health interventions. And I, I want to point something out to the community that's, that's incredibly crucial is, yes, there is a light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to this virus, but we're not quite there yet. Quite the opposite. We're, we're very far way off from that. And so this is not the time to give up. This is not the time to promote more infections, to promote more hospitalizations, to promote more deaths for the sake of political expediency. What we need people to remember, what I need Harris County residents and the community to remember is that we've gotten to where we are right now, avoided the worst fate that other regions have seen by wearing our face coverings, by avoiding gatherings, by avoiding crowded places, and that uh, and to recognize that a rescinding of restrictions doesn't come with uh, any reduction in, in the virus's contagiousness. So I hope that folks will continue uh, to follow the spirit of the, of, the, of the behaviors that we need them to follow, to wear the face coverings, to avoid gatherings with folks not in their households. I hope we can do that, and in that way, we'll get to herd immunity without first going through a crisis and the level of crisis we've already avoided. You want to say that in Spanish? Hemos recibido, obviamente, todos la información acerca de, de la eliminación de ciertos parámetros de salud por parte del Estado. Y lo que quiero que sepa la comunidad es que este no es el momento de permitir más muertes, más hospitalizaciones, más enfermedades, solamente para ganar puntos políticos. Debemos reconocer que los pasos que nos han, nos han permitido hasta este momento evitar las crisis que se han visto en otras regiones, en otros estados, son los mismos pasos que tenemos que seguir tomando. Sí hay una luz al fin del túnel, todos la vemos, pero todavía falta, todavía falta tiempo para poder llegar a, a, esa, a esa inmunidad de, de, de grupo y de aquí a allá tenemos que seguir evitando reuniones con gentes con quienes no vivimos, evitando sitios con demasiadas personas, utilizando la mascarilla, para así no ver el tipo de, de tragedia que todavía puede ser posible para nuestra comunidad. So why do you believe this was a move of political expediency rather than what is best for businesses and Texans in general? Look, only about 6% of, of Texans have been fully vaccinated, and we're working our absolute hardest in Harris County to get those vaccinations. Our FEMA site works like clockwork. We are constantly getting those vaccines out. We're doing everything possible to get people vaccinated. But we can't pretend that we are even halfway or a quarter or a tenth of the way to where we need to be. So what else is the answer? All I know is that there's been a tension lately on the failures of the state when it comes to the power grid. And that this sure is a good story to distract from that. My problem is you're putting the health of the community, my community, at risk. We may or may not have a crisis, but we shouldn't play with lives in this way. Because what I'm afraid of is when people see this rescinding of, of public health interventions, of public health guidelines and restrictions, what they're going to hear is that there's an all clear. And what I, I want to, to say very directly is that's not the case. That's not the case. We, we have got to continue with the behaviors that have kept this community from facing the very worst of this virus. And that still includes the over 3,000 deaths we've had. But this is not the time to give up. I wish as much as anyone that we were done, that we were almost at herd immunity and with a majority of people vaccinated. And I can tell you I'm working day and night, and my team is working day, night, weekends on getting those vaccines out the door. But we're just not there yet. We're just not there yet. And so when it comes uh, to your ability to, to shape policy locally, the governor said that essentially you don't have any power until it reaches 15% hospitalization rate for seven days. Is that the way you read it? 
Yes, I, I, what, I, what I read right now, the takeaway is, is, is um, what may be mis misconstrued as an all clear for the community, and that's why I want to be very transparent, very direct with the community to say it's not the time to change our behaviors. And then, of course, uh, there, there are some, some uh, rather limited actions that counties are permitted to take once hospitalizations are at a certain level, but you have to remember El Paso, for example, they crossed that threshold. They took steps. They took steps. And yet their hospitals were overwhelmed. That 15% is not a magical number that somehow if you, make, if you establish restrictions at that point, you can guarantee your hospitals are not going to be overwhelmed and your community is going to be okay. And even then, there's very limited leeway. So, you know, what I see here is a, is a, a, a um, premature and, 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 a, and, a, mis, and a misguided uh, decision that, that is putting the community at risk and that is unnecessary because we're headed to where we need to go. We're headed to where we need to go. So I hope that the community will continue to engage in the behaviors that we need to keep us all safe and remember that it's about all of us together we're all going to continue doing our job on the vaccinations. Uh, we're going to continue watching those numbers and keeping the community informed. But let's not get distracted by this political action. Let's focus on the fact that those numbers are still very high. I could tell you ICUs, for example, are 25 percent uh, with COVID right now. Our, our positivity rate over 12 percent. Remember, at most, at the very most, it should be 5 percent. We still have a ways to go, and so this is just not the time to give up. We're, we're too close to the finish line to give up now. I know you okay. sent a last, last question. question. Yeah. I know you sent a letter with Mayor Turner over the governor before he made the announcement, perhaps in anticipation of it. A, why did you do that? B, has he responded? And when's the last time you talked to him? Mayor Turner and I are constantly in communication about the 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 pandemic and its impact on the city of Houston and Harris County. And when we heard that there may be an announcement rescinding uh, public health interventions and requirements, we felt it was important to, to draw a line and, and make clear that that would be a dangerous proposition for our community. So even before we knew exactly what it was, we wanted to, to lay down that marker in the hopes, in the hopes um, that, 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 would, that that would be a message that, that it, it's just not an appropriate decision for our community right now. Obviously, it didn't achieve its purpose. But I think what we have to remember is we still have this direct communication with the community. And ultimately, we, me, the community, we are all responsible for Harris County. And we ourselves have to continue to take that personal responsibility to ensure that this political move doesn't lead to more hundreds and thousands of deaths here in Harris County and hospitalizations as well. Remember, just in Harris County, we've already had over 3,200 deaths and, and countless, uh, countless illnesses and hospitalizations from this virus. We're too close to beating this with vaccines to, to lose all our progress uh, for the sake of political expediency.